Hey there guys, in today's video I am going to be continuing working with Marshmallow, the Sulphur Crested Cockatoo, and we are going to be working on using that bridge we established for some behaviors that he already knows. This is going to be one of the fastest ways to establish what that bridge really means to him and to get him in line with my new training plan. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, you want to make sure to stick around. That's going to be coming up right after this. Hey there guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. Now in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how I am going to use that bridge I have already established with Marshmallow, my sulfur crested cockatoo. Now, when you establish a bridge, you are going to be able to use that for just about any training that you are doing. But if your animal knows any behaviors already, if they were taught by a previous owner, using those behaviors to further establish that bridge is going to help you immensely because your animal is already going to be expecting some kind of reinforcement after performing those behaviors. By using your bridge, you can get them fully in line with what you are planning for your training. So it's going to help you get results that much faster. It's always important to remember that no matter what behavior you are training, uh, even if it isn't necessarily connected to other behaviors you want to train, it is going to make those behaviors easier to train by building your training relationship with that animal. So by virtue of that, any behaviors that you can train with your animal, that you can cue, have that animal perform a behavior, and then bridge and reinforce that behavior, you are helping your animal have a better understanding of how training works. So training those more difficult or more desired behaviors in the future is going to be infinitely easier. It's important to remember that training is just communicating with your animal and by giving your animal more practice in that regard, you're ultimately setting them up for success. So let's just do a quick little rundown of what a basic training session of that is going to look like. Can you step up? Good bird. Step up. Good bird, step up. Good bird. Step down. Good bird. Now, as you guys can see, this is a very, very simple training session. It's also a very short training session. I think it's really important to remember that when you are working with an animal, but especially a brand new animal, you don't want to overload them. You want to make sure that you set up manageable training sessions that give you the ability to still end on a positive note. For this training session with Marshmallow, we worked on a step up and a step down, both of which are behaviors that he seems to have a decent handle on. We utilize the bridge that I established with him, in this case, just the word good, uh, so that he can know when he is doing the behavior that I would like for him to do and get reinforced with that corn, which is the primary reinforcer that we previously established. So all of these things are just building on each other to ultimately make it where we have the best communication and the best possible relationship with an animal that we are working with. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when we are working on those simple behaviors like that. First of all, with step up and step down, I cannot say this enough. If you are going to train a bird to step up, it is just as important, if not more important, to train the animal to step down. 
Marshmallow knows how to come to me, but he needs to be able to get down from me as well. I've seen multiple people train a bird just to come to them, and then they don't have the ability to make the bird go away. Second, you'll notice that we broke it up and we changed things up a bit. Not just was it a step up, step down, which would be the anticipated way to do it and definitely a great way to start, but then we also did step up to another step up from another hand before stepping down. So slight variations like that, making sure you are using that bridge, making sure you are communicating with your animal, ensures that your animal is engaged and interested in the training that you are doing with them. And it really is that simple. You just need to practice. Your training sessions can also be a great way for you to practice as well. If you're not comfortable in your training experience, doing what I am doing here with a tripod and a camera, recording your training sessions is going to be incredibly useful because you will be able to see your body language, you will be able to see your bird's body language, and perhaps there are things you did not notice in the moment, but re-watching those videos is going to help you in the long run. So I certainly hope this idea has helped you if you guys are working with, have previously worked with, or plan on working with a brand new animal, just to help ensure that you have the best possible communication and relationship with that animal. So if you found this video helpful, you wanna make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, just like always, I'm gonna ask you guys to say hi to Marshmallow in the comment section. Subscribe to the High Redbird channel if you haven't already. That way you don't miss out on any of the work I'm doing with Marshmallow. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I do need to say a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon. By signing up to support this channel, they help me make more tutorials and videos showcasing animal care possible. If you'd like to find out more about subscribing to my Patreon, you can find the link in the description section down below. Thanks so much. <music>